What is up, y'all? Snipes and Snarf Flats, your unauthorized place for Disney, Pixar, Marvel, and Lucasfilm. I'm your host, Jason, as usual. And what do we do here? Well, we talk about everything in that Disney empire as it hits for the week. And since last week, there hasn't been much, but at the same time, there has been. We're only going to be covering two categories, but one of the categories is a major D23 drop from Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. It's probably going to take up a lot of time because they told us everything they could possibly tell us so if it's really going to be on a time schedule this time i have a feeling we're definitely going to go over we're going to throw us right into mouse in the death lamp and mouse in the death lamp what is that that's where we talk about everything disney and pixar related in the world of entertainment so first and foremost dumbo we have had two trailers for dumbo since i've went off air last and they have both amazed me in different ways. The first Dumbo trailer we saw was a behind-the-scenes trailer. And one, it made me think immediately because they said no one better than Tim Burton could do this. And the more I thought of it, I was like, I mean, because Tim Burton understands the, 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 what, the, the character that's an outcast and this and that. The fact that Tim Burton has an understanding of the circus and the circus environment and the characters in it that is just uncanny. And it's one of the things that really started me thinking while watching this behind the scenes thing. And not only do the circus footage in this movie look so real of what you see, some of it, and a lot more than I thought would be, is real while watching this and I couldn't believe how they blended in the real and the CGI and it's gonna it looks like it's gonna be really hard to pick out what's real what's real acrobats what's real this and that what's real choreographed dance stuff and what's actually CGI in the circus it was really neat seeing the green screen meshed with actual circus like environments and I can't wait to see more of the behind the scenes after this releases in the theater and we get to get our hands on it on blu-ray or digital or however you do it but to really get a good look at some of the behind the scenes is going to be really fun because i enjoyed this look at this movie a whole lot and on another note we got one more trailer actually and this trailer was different this trailer was supposed to be a big reveal of the arcade fire baby mind version of the song right and not taking anything away from it i love this version of the song it is awesome like it sounds great but i took two things that i probably wasn't even supposed to take out of this short trailer other than the music and that was one the adorable scene with dumbo and his mom where they're going back and forth and i I really think we're going to get a lot more of that dynamic than we ever got in the actual cartoon. Because like I keep saying, there's not really much to the cartoon. So there's so much they can build on here and add to that I really can't wait to see the rest of this. And that what falls in immediately to the second thing I took out of that short trailer. And that was the first glimpse we got of Keaton's kind of turn to a villain. How, he, how he's been bewildered and this and that. And he, really, like I said, a really sheep, wolf in sheep's clothing villain. And this time, I mean, you got to see that just quick contrast to my animals do what I want. And it was just so like, it just, I was like, yes, this is going to be awesome. It just totally blew me away. I can't wait to see more of that. I'm actually really, really excited for Dumbo. And these two trailers have made me even more excited for Dumbo if that was even possible. But. I really, I loved getting a look at that villain turn because I think we really are going to get that wolves and sheep calling villain. And like I said, everything I've seen out of this so far, I can't wait. Bring it on. Why haven't they took my money for tickets yet? I feel like I'm going to see Captain Marvel tomorrow, right? And I feel like I've had my ticket money for like, what, two months now? Almost three. And I'm finally going to get to see this movie. Meanwhile, Dumbo's at the end of the literal month we are in. And I'm starting to wonder where my tickets are. I, I'm ready to buy this. Disney, take my money. You don't have to show me anymore. In fact, don't show me anymore. Just sell me tickets to this movie so I can go see it. But that's Dumbo. That's the two trailers we saw. I said, really impressed. Can't wait to see this movie. I'm already ready to give my money away. So, <laughs> Actually, so in direct contrast to wanting to give my money away, that links us into this second thing. And... This is the second part of Mouse in the Death Lamp today. We got a big announcement, and it was that I got I got this from the Campia show, so I'm going to be 
citing some of the things he said because it really resonates to what I think about this. But Maleficent 2 dropped a poster and bumped up its date and gave itself a name. And I have made no secrets my feelings on Maleficent. I could not stand that movie. I loved Angelina Jolie casting of it. She is the perfect person to play Maleficent. I'm not even going to like front. She was great as Maleficent and a great pick. However, they didn't let her play Maleficent. They played someone who was not even anti-hero. She was a hero. And I don't get how you can do that to what to me is literally the strongest villain in Disney classic lore. I mean, this is a person who she wasn't invited to a party, so she said she was going to kill their firstborn. Wow. Like, talk about make sure she gets her invitation next time, because that's crazy on a level that we haven't even seen before. I wasn't invited. Fine, your baby's going to die. Like, whoa. That is a level of villainy that is, like, even beyond Disney movie. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's beyond Disney cartoon. At least all the other villains kind of have a reason or, like, a want to get something grander. But she was just like, oh, I wasn't invited? Fine, someone's going to die. And, actually, that's one of the things that I love about Sleeping Beauty so much was the iconic villainy of Maleficent. And I feel like they totally destroyed that in the film. And they just... They turned her into, like I said, a hero. Not an anti-hero even, but a literal hero. So needless to say, I am not excited for Maleficent 2. They have bumped it up to October 18th of this year. That's damn near like a whole year bumped up from where it was. And it has a name. It is called Maleficent Mistress of Evil. Coming with the poster that's been up here. And, I mean, the poster's cool. The poster makes me think it's going to be evil. The Mistress of Evil, that's like, okay, you're going to go evil this time? Because you went straight up hero last time, so I don't really see how we can make the change. And that's where I come into seeing it on the Campia show, because he said something that just resonated with me and made me think. And that was, what if Mistresses of Evil isn't even talking about Maleficent in the first place? And instead talking about some other evil that's going to come in that she's going to have to face off against. And honestly, that actually adds up way more in to what we saw in the first film. So, I don't even have my fingers crossed that this Mistress of Evil could mean that we see Maleficent return to her dark roots. Because I just, after the first one, y'all, I don't care. I really don't. I don't care. And I'm going to go see it, obviously. I'm going to come to y'all. I'm going to tell you how much I liked it or how much I hated it. I might even just compare it to the first one so I don't say that I hated it too much because, y'all, I just, I'm not excited for this movie. I wish I was. I wish I could say, yes, I can't wait for Maleficent 2. But Maleficent, Mistress of Evil, is just not even on my list of excitement. And unfortunately, I hate to end it on a down note, but. That is the end of Mouse in the Death Lamp today. And we're going to go into our much longer area, because there's a lot to talk about to this one. Bring up the e-ticket, because we're going to the parks. D23. D23 unleashed this just giant cavalcade of all the concept art and pictures we've ever seen, along with new ones. And just a whole breakdown of things to expect from the park. So, first what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over some of the reveal all stuff they put in general. And a lot of these pictures that I'm going to do aren't going to match up here to what I'm talking about. I'm going to try to match them up as much as possible. But some of the stuff, like the food and whatnot and the drinks, I don't actually know what's what. So, they're just going to play in the background while I talk about and list off all of the different things they said. So first off will be the concept art and the actual walkthroughs of the park they put up. I'm going to put them up over here in the corner while I talk about it. And they really got into some really cool stuff. Like one, there was the animatronic Hondo, which the audio animatronics, y'all, the department that does these has gotten so amazing of the years since Walt first developed the bird for the Tiki Room that this thing, when it's in action, like, it's so fluid and it's so just real that I, it just, it totally took my breath away when I saw this thing in motion. Because I was like, oh, wow, that is, that is, that's a person. That's If I didn't know there was a robot under it, I would think there was a cast member in full makeup under there just talking and doing his thing. I was just so impressed 
by the fluidity of his movement, first of all, that I could not believe it. And then when we got into some of these pictures of the land, y'all, the immersion in this place and how real it's going to look is just so intensely awesome that I cannot wait for this thing to, be, to debut. It's going to debut in Disneyland first, but this fall, when we get into Hollywood Studios, I will be spending a lot of time there. I'll probably be going live a lot from there, just so anyone who can't see it immediately can really get some hands-on and just first eye looks of what this place looks like on a daily basis because i will go multiple days throughout the month and just really just dig into everything especially this this is one of the features they talked about while walking through all this awesome lands besides the fact that the cast members will be wearing all those different cast costumes i talked about last week and that they're interchangeable so you're really going to get a feel of a lived-in world that a bunch of people reside in and do things day to day but it's also going to be the first land that fully interacts with the disney play app and like right, the disney play app so far has kind of just been a thing to play mini games on in line but they kept saying it's eventually going to interact with the park this is going to be the first example you're going to be able to use it to translate galactic language you're going to be able to use it to learn what's hidden inside crates and containers, whatever's being smuggled and whatnot. You're going to use it to participate in missions. So they're going to give you missions throughout the land that you're going to be able to go on here and there. And it's you just you you're literally doing missions to to help your um, what what would you call it? Help your your status, I guess, to in Batu. So, and when I say your status, I mean the crew members are actually going to eventually know your name and talk about you, and you're actually going to be part of this city when you are there. And so, if you get missions and stuff, you're part of their lives now, their everyday lives of this city, and they're kind of going to know who you are, and you're going to work on these missions and this and that. And as you go through them in advance, and you're going to be more well known throughout the area. Which, that, y'all, that's a level of immersion that, oh my, we have not even, like, tapped into yet. And that's just so on a whole nother level to me that I don't even know, I don't even know if my brain's going to be able to fully take this. Like I said, there's a chance I might just break down into full, like, weepy little baby mode when I go into this place because this is not everything I've ever dreamed of. This is beyond everything I've ever dreamed of in actually participating in the Star Wars galaxy. So, totally blown away by some of the things I'm hearing out of this place. And not only will you be able to participate in missions, it'll let you interact with things such as the antenna arrays, door panels, drinking fountains, droids, media screens, ships, and obviously they added the and more because, you know, they're always going to keep throwing other stuff in this. But I just... I, Interacting with drinking fountains like that's got uh, so many questions right now about interacting with drinking fountains that I do not even know where to start off said questions because how do you interact with a drinking fountain? But I mean, you know what? I, I can't wait to see. I really can't. Everything I've heard or seen about all of this, I cannot wait to see where they're going with this. I'm so very excited like i said you've been seeing these pop up by me the land looks amazing the concept art is amazing and that play feature and all of these pictures of the actual concepts are not the only thing d23 dumped on us they dumped a little bit of everything so now we're going to go into merchandising to quote the great yogurt of space balls that's what it's all about merchandising 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 now you won't see star wars the flamethrower like they had in space falls but you will see some really cool stuff first of all we're going to talk about the droid depot and the droid depot is unlike any droid little thing we've ever seen because the parts are going to come off a conveyor belt and you pick your parts as they're going around the conveyor belt right and you put together an astromech droid either an r series or a bb series and this astromech droid is going to be able to interact with elements in the land and it's also going to have additional chips 
that will customize its abilities and whatnot, and you'll really be able to make this droid your own, and it'll have its own personality, it'll have its own everything. And much like all the choppers and R2s and BBs of the Star Wars galaxies, they're going to have, you're going to build them to have its own personality based on how you want it to act. And that's just, that's on some just whole other level. Like I said, that blows my banshee away. And take, once again, Disney, I've been saying this a lot, take my money. And speaking of take my money, I have a feeling Star Wars Galaxy's Edge is going to take a lot of money from me. So, Star Wars Galaxy's Edge at this Droid Depot, you'll also be able to buy a pre-built droid. They'll have pre-built C-3PO's and a pre-built Rex that will play Bluetooth music out of your phone. So I don't know exactly what the C-3PO will do. I'm pretty sure it'll worry a lot and babble until you shut it off, much like C-3PO. But I am just, I'm, I'm very curious to see the actual level of droid. I mean, on paper, it sounds amazing, but everything sounds amazing on paper about this place. And I really want to see the actual functionality of some of this stuff. And speaking of functionality, Savis's Workshop. Savis's Workshop is one of the next places they talked about, and this is where you will be able to build a lightsaber all the way down to the Kyber Crystal. And if you've seen these lightsabers, if they're anything like the pictures they show, and those aren't just mock-up models, these lightsabers look totally legit. You'll be able to build them down to everything and buy them there on the spot. But I, and I don't know the actual full abilities of the saber other than you'll build a lightsaber with a kyber crystal. I don't know if they'll be like the stacks I've got where you can take the thing off and put it on and it fires up with the LED, you know what I'm saying? Or you, I don't know if you've seen them going around, but they had a concept and a what, um, uh, blueprint of one that like the LEDs spit out and streamed in. It was really weird. Like I didn't think how it could be actually work, but... They, it looked as if they found a way to make one you can wear on your hip and still have a fake blade pop out of that looks like a lightsaber. So, really curious to see that. I will probably own more than one because I just am an addict when it comes to all things lightsaber. I've got stacks of these things, literally. I've probably got six of them. And every time they come out with a new one, I'm like, I'm not going to get that one. And they show me something dumb like, look, you can take the blade off and wear it. And I'm like, oh, yes, I need that too then. And it, they get me every single time. In fact, all they've really got to do is say, here, hold this. And usually I'm just like, no, because if I hold it, it's on. I, that's, I'm done. So very excited about building my own light, lightsaber. They've also got Dak Ondar's Den of Antiquities. It could be Doc Ondor's Den of Antiqu Antiquities. Either way, it is a Den of Antiquities. And in this Den, they will have rare items from all eras of Star Wars, including rare Jedi and Sith artifacts like holocrons, lightsabers that you know, and a whole lot more stuff that they're not really getting too much into. You'll see some of the pictures popping up on the side. It's going to have, like, they look like busts of people and just all kinds of random stuff are in these stores. It looks really, really neat. And then they're going to have the creature stall, obviously. That's the next spot. The creature stall is where you can grab a creature. It'll have porgs, tauntauns, rat, uh, Rathars, Wampas, all your random stuffed creatures. I don't know if they'll do anything. Like, I know mine talks over here. I don't know if it'll be on that level. It might just be a big stuffed one, but I'm not 100% sure because they didn't really get into it. But, yeah. These stores sound completely awesome. All the way down to this next one, a Toy Darien. And this Toy Darien will take money, no, but he'll also take credit, so don't worry about it. The Toy Darien Toy Maker is what it's going to be called, and it's a Toy Darien that makes, well, toys. And it's going to be artisan-style toys, like handmade stuff. Like, you get plush characters, wood, tin toys, instruments, stuff like that that's, like, handmade. I think that's really cool, because that gives, once again, everything here is going to give a feel of being on planet. They're not going to sell any Galaxy's Edge merchandise at all. So you won't find a t-shirt that says Galaxy's Edge on it because that would take you out of the fact that you're off planet. So while that's probably somewhere still, it will not be in this park as far as they're saying. Everything here is going to be either of the Star Wars Galaxy or something that is made from the Star Wars Galaxy. So that's going to be really cool. I'm actually excited about that because 
it seems like, like I said, they're taking this immersion level to all new heights, and I really can't wait to see where they go with this because they're just it seems like the sky is the limit with this one and now there's two of these both of these sound kind of kiosky i'm betting these are going to be kiosks each outside each separate part of the land on one side you'll have resistance supply and that'll be where you get all the resistance stuff they'll have badges hats pins accessories etc 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 all themed to the resistance and then on the other side next to some more first order eat activity they're going to have the for first order cargo we will be able to get caps gear model ships pins and more now i don't know where but they've also got all they showed a bunch of these different clothes and stuff you can give full jedi outfits like look straight out the movie i will definitely have one of those because why not but um, there's just they've gone to total different levels to make sure you can really get every part of your Star Wars experience here, especially when it comes to merchandise. They are going to make a mint off of this place in merchandise. But they are also going to really rack it up in another area, and that is food. It's got a, a lot of the food that I saw, and I'm going to put the food up in random pictures because in all honesty... I don't know what half this stuff is, other than the fact that even in a galaxy far, far away, you can get tacos. So you'll see some tacos pop up in a minute, which actually made me really happy. But a lot of this food gave me the Santuli Canteen vibe from Pandora, and it looks like more fresh. And I'm going to go down the list of food. It looks like there's not going to be a traditional sit-down restaurant with waiters and stuff. It's all going to be more of a go-up-and-order and sit down wherever you can sit down type thing. Which is cool with me. That's where I usually eat anyway. I don't really go to the restaurants. I'm more of a go get the quick serve meals. And I've never really been disappointed in that. The quick serve meals are always really good. So, But like I said, the pictures aren't going to match up with what I'm about to name. Because some of this food I don't even really know what it is. So I've got a list here where I'm going to cheat. I'm going to pull it out. And um, you know, one of the things I did notice also besides the Santuli Canteen thing is... They've got this stuff named, right? And they've got it named for what it is off Galaxy, but then they go into a real big description of what it really is. And funny thing, I guess it's just me, but I'd almost wish they'd have just went with the Galaxy name and I wouldn't know what I was eating because I honestly probably would have tried more. But I get why they do it. you got to know what you're eating. But I thought it would be really cool if they just kept some of these names. So the names I'll give most of this, I'll give the name they give, and then it'll kind of give a kind of a description of what it is. So like I said, bear with me. I'm going to cheat here, so I'm going to read. So here we go. You've got Docking Bay 7 Food and Cargo, owned by Chef Strono Cookie Tugs. So... That's the alien that owns this place. This is going to be one of the main eating areas, I think. And I think most of the stuff you'll see in bowls in these pictures is going to come from here, right? So here you go. Here's what it is. You got braised shock roast, which is a beef pot roast with cavatelli pasta, kale, and mushrooms. You've got fried Indorian tip yip, which is a chicken dish with roasted vegetable, mash, and herb gravy. The Felucian Garden Spread which is a plant-based kefta meatball dish with herb, herb, hummus, and tomato cucumber relish with pita bread. There's the Athorian Garden Loaf, which is a plant-based meatloaf dish served with roast vegetable mash, seasonal vegetables, and mushroom sauce. Smoked Kadu Ribs, which is smoked country sticky pork ribs with a blueberry corn muffin and cabbage slaw. There's the oven roasted burra fish, which is a Dijon crusted sustainable fish with mixed greens, roasted vegetables, canola, pumpkin seed, and a creamy green curry ranch dressing. There's the oven roasted tip yip. Featuring roasted chicken with mixed greens, roasted vegetables, quinoa, and pumpkin seeds with creamy green courage ranch and dressing. The Yob Shrimp Noodle Salad. See how these names are? I would love it if they had just kept them because we wouldn't have known what the hell we were eating. It would almost been a game. There's a marinated noodle salad with chilled shrimp. The dessert options will include a boringly named raspberry cream puff with passion fruit moots and an even more boring named chocolate cake with white chocolate mousse and coffee custard. There will be two children's menu options, and not wanting to scare your kids, they just called them fried chicken with macaroni and cheese, and a chilled shrimp with vegetables and rice noodle salad. 
So that's the first run, and that's like probably one of the main restaurant places from this joint. You know what I'm saying? So when you, I just. <laughs> I love those names, y'all. I can't get over the fact that they really gave them the alien names first, and I still, for the life of me, wish they would have just stuck with that. That's great. Now, you've also got Ronto Roasters, and it sounds like this is even going to be more of an outside type thing, but this is cool because it's got a barbecue pit, right, that's powered by a pod racing engine. So you just see a big-ass pod racing engine that's going to be powering this grill. And that's actually more cool to me than the food, even though the food here sounds even better than what I named off the first time. You've got Melroon Juice, the Turkey Jerky, and Ronto Wrap, filled with spice, grilled sausage, and roasted pork. And then you've got, besides those things at the grill, there's going to be a snack joint called Kat Saka's Kettle, where you can get an outpost mix, which is a popcorny thing that's going to show up. You'll see that in the uh, pictures. And it combines savory, spicy, and sweet flavors. So, I mean, in all honesty, like I said on this, it seems like the hardest part is going to figure out what you actually want to eat. Because that is a lot of options. And it's way more options than what came out of Pandora at first. So, I mean, I'm totally excited about that because that's a lot of food and I like the I like having a lot of food to choose from because that's just I mean why not have a lot of things to choose from so you don't really get bored I remember I tried a little of everything from Pandora on the first day without even trying and I was done like I now know every dish there is at Pandora sure they tossed them up a little bit right afterwards because I guess they had got some feedback but honestly there wasn't that many changes and but how, however, in the Animal Kingdom, one of the best places to eat is the Santuli Canteen in Pandora. However, I love the fact that this place seems to have more options and a more eclectic version of options for everyone. Because not everyone wants a health-looking food thing. A lot of people will just go to this friggin' pod racer fueled barbecue pit and munch down on some barbecue. Because, I mean, that sounds to me like that's where I'm going to be. Now, the other place I'm going to be is covers this next spot we're going to go straight to the mini drinks of star wars galaxy this is the last thing we're going to cover for star wars galaxy's edge and y'all this is cool so obviously there's going to be blue and green milk you we knew that going in i knew there'd be blue milk at least and i had a feeling there was going to be green milk just because of how many people were talking about green milk in the long run you know what i'm saying ever since the last jedi and the whole factor when luke got it so I'm going to run through the drinks real quick, and it looks like when you go to Oga's Cantina, you know what I'm saying, Oga's Cantina is the actual Cantina Cantina, like kind of like a Maz Eisley thing you're used to, it's owned by a person named Oga Gara. It's going to have a bunch of beverages, well, once again, I'm going to pop these pictures up, I do not know what's what besides the milks. So we're just going to pop them up at random, and I'm going to read to you what they are. So first you've got your alcoholic beverages, you've got the Bespin Fizz, the Bloody Rancor, the Dagobah Slug Slinger, the Fuzzy Tauntaun, the Jedi Mind Trick, now that sounds strong, the Jet Juice, the Outer Rim, the Spearian Calf, the T-16 Skyhopper, and my personal favorite, the Yub Nub. I don't even care what's in the Yub Nub, it's going to be my favorite drink just because Ewoks, Yub Nub, man, I'm just, I'm just going to love being able to go to the bar and say, Yub Nub! And I'm going to have that song stuck in my head the whole... You know what I'm saying? From the, well, original Jedi before they changed everything. I can't wait. That's awesome. The Yub Nub. And they're also going to have some non-alcoholic libations. We're going to have Black Spire Brew, Blue Bantha, Carbon Freeze, Cliff Dweller, Hyperdrive, Punch It, J Jabba Juice. I don't want no parts of Jabba Juice. No telling where that came from. Uh, Mugen Tea and Tureen Tea. So, there's all your drinks from the actual cantina. You've got non-alcoholic and alcoholic drinks from the cantina, so everybody can enjoy the environment. I think that's a really good idea. When I first heard cantina, I thought it was going to be a straight bar, and I like the idea of it being a bar that kind of mixes a bar that you can also hang out with the little ones and really have a good family time at, too. You know what I'm saying? So, I think that's cool. Docking Bay 7 Food in Cargo or also features some grub, well, that features most of the grub, you know what I'm saying? They'll have some drinks, they'll have a non-alcoholic, they'll have Fatro and Mook Juice, and Rancho Roasters will have the Sour Sarlacc 
or Tatooine Sunset, those will both be non-alcoholic too, and those are the order to go with your food. So that's the milks, that's the drinks. Like I said, I'm very excited about all this, and I am probably going to try every one of those drinks if I can stand up and keep trying them. I'll have the kids try all the other ones so I can try them. I, obviously, after saying all this, it is no secret that I am going to have to come with double the wallets when I go to Galaxy's Edge. I might just wind up getting a gift card so they don't shut my card off just from randomness that's going to go on when I go there, but I am totally excited i can't wait for this place is going to open right around my birthday so if all else fails i can just use it as an ex use it as an excuse this is going to be the excuse to be my birthday and i'm going to spit it in star wars you know what i'm saying so i'm going to go all out just straight hyperdrive on this one and i'm going to try everything i'll let i'll definitely review it and talk about it and let y'all see everything about it as soon as it opens Give me a couple weeks, and I'll have it all broke down to talk about. But until then, that is everything for the e-ticket. And that's all we got for the show today, y'all. So as usual, hit us at the email address. Send us some questions. Send us some suggestions. Send us anything you want to see in the park. Send us anything I didn't talk about that you want me to talk about. Snipesandsnarfblats at gmail.com. Love to hear from y'all. Love talking back and forth to y'all in the comments. Even more so, I love it when y'all follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Love going back and forth with y'all. If y'all haven't done it, check it out down there in the description. Hit the links. Follow us on all those. That's the best way to keep up date with data. Stuff's hit the site because most of the stuff I talk about, I go over in the site the day it actually happens. Some things sneak on the show that don't make it there, but... If you really want to know day-to-day -day what's going on, that's your best bet. Check out Instagram because there's always some very interesting pictures of the park. I go there a lot, so I try to take pictures of things that I just don't really ever see anyone else take pictures of. You know what I'm saying? I try to find the obscure things that most people just don't notice, and I'll throw them up there. Or anything that's just absolutely beautiful that catches my eye, I'll throw that up there too. And like I said, all my food reviews usually go down on Instagram and Facebook. So, once again, get down there in the description, subscribe to our YouTube channel, hit the bell, and subscribe to every single one of those social media links you can to keep up with what we're doing. And don't forget, tomorrow, because tonight I'm going to go see Captain Marvel, tomorrow you're going to see my full review of Captain Marvel. As usual, no spoilers. I'm just going to tell you whether you should shell out money and go see it now or wait to watch it on your own couch. But I have a feeling with this one, you already know the answer to that one. This one's going to break some records. But who knows? The reviews are in. They're a little mixed. They're all over the place. No one's saying it's bad. Some people are saying it's just good. Some people are saying it's the greatest thing they've ever seen. So I won't know until I go see it. And you will know first thing tomorrow when I pop it up. Probably pop up around noon as usual. But who knows? Sometimes I get them in there early just because I'm feeling a little frisky. So... Like I said, one, one more time, check out the link, subscribe to the video, hit the bell, know what's going on. I will also see you tomorrow for some Captain Marvel review footage. Until then, you know I always sign off with a quote, and you're going to know this quote right as you hear it. Do or do not. There is no try.